Welcome to Narrowway Homestead, where nearly every animal out here is a free-range animal. Not quite. Um, the goal for nearly every animal is to be free-ranged. The ducks are free-range. They go everywhere. The cats are kind of free-range. Dagger's completely free-range. The kittens, Cloak and Katana, they're free-range except for at night currently because they're young. And I currently have no idea where they're at. Now, obviously it's not dark dark yet, so, but I'm kind of wandering around looking for them. And people say, oh, you got animals. Like, all you gotta do is do feed and, and water and everything's good. Well, that's just, just the type of comment from somebody who doesn't own any animals. Um, at least not any farm animals. The ducks are all free range. There have been times where I'm looking for all of them, but a lot of the training with these guys really has to do with being able to find them. And for now, most of them are right here. They're all kind of hanging about. Check this out. Training ducks with this. And that bell can be heard from pretty far away and they all come running. And if one does not come running, then I know I need to go look for one. And they typically get corn. I think I'm out of corn right now, though. So now they're going to be hurt and betrayed. Here, have some, have some crumbs, guys. Corn containers all busted. I kind of thought about training the cats to come to the bell too, which would be possible. But this is so much chaos for them that the kittens really don't want to be involved with all that. So, and uh, have another free-range animal as the livestock guardian dog. Although currently, he is more interested in free-ranging in a hole right next to the rabbits. And the rabbits are not free-range, they're also super young. There are enclosures that they can go into when it's not in the middle of the heat of the day, and they can be just kind of shifted around on the grass and Mow the grass essentially for me. Obviously I have robot mowers that do that, but primarily there's places like this that aren't hit with the mowers that they can kind of go around an edge and of course get nutrients. As long as you watch out for a few certain toxic plants, I don't know that they would necessarily eat them, but yeah, there's some plants that are not good for, for livestock. Anyway, we're looking for kittens. I know where Minion is, he's in the house. He's free range some of the time. Free range sleeping on his bed, probably. The kittens usually have been, they're expanding though. They're usually in the outdoor kitchen or in the deck behind the living quarters. They've been expanding to hang out behind the duck coop. Sometimes I've seen them around the firewood pile in the garden, but I don't think they're really like trying to chill there. And the other place I've seen them hiding is over here on the side of this building, which is pretty much my last guess right now. So I'm really hoping they pop out. Otherwise this video is gonna be uh, titled, Nate Can't Find Kittens versus Nate Calls Kittens Successfully. Cloak, Tom, kitty kitties. Use the word kitties for all of them and use their individual names to try to help out. Kitty kitties. Oh, they're on the deck. There they are. I thought they were maybe missing. So, Katana comes very good to her name and is very vocal. And so is Dagger. And Cloak, Cloak is very, um, well, she's just Cloak. Kitty kitty. Cloak. Fortunately, they all three prefer to hang out next to each other. Katana is very, very interested in, in coming to me. Something, Cloak's just different. Um, I've had several cats and she's so far been the one that's just not interested. Like I almost have to pay no attention to her for like eight hours before she'll like come to my voice. So basically, most of the time, and it's and I've treated Katana and Cloak the same way, so I haven't been trying to pick them up every time I call them or, or anything like that. 
because I do I do train my kittens, but they are their own their own personality and their own animal. <laughs> Katana, Katana, you're so awesome. You're so awesome. Who's so awesome? Who's so awesome? Yeah. So yeah, normally if someone would say like, my cat doesn't come when I call, you know, what do I do? And I'd have some suggestions, but everything I've tried has worked on all the other cats I've had and Cloak's just, just not interested. It's not like she's been like traumatized in some certain way. As far as like, yes, yes, hi, you're very attention. You're very attention interested. She doesn't mind, she doesn't mind pets, she doesn't mind attention. But I've avoided picking her up nearly as much, just trying to do a couple different things to help out a little bit and avoid having, having issues. Now she's purring. Oh, hold on, hold on. I forgot I can do this. So she's happy to see me. Happy to see me, but just not overly excited about it all. The really cool thing is she's very interested in hanging out with Dagger. She's almost always with him. Those two have bonded really well. Katana's bonded to the people possibly more, more than the other two. Although when I've seen a lot of them two being together too, Katana's just really well-rounded in her personality. And Cloak is, Cloak is different. I named her Cloak. And she kind of is like a cloak hiding in the shadows and all this sort of thing. So I'm not really sure uh, what to do more other than to not not pick her up a lot and I give her a ton of attention. Just, you know, give her respect when I when I pet her. You know, make sure make sure she's loved and attached and feed her all the time. Food is a big part of the whole thing. Uh, most of the time when I call them, I give them give them food. She's coming out, coming out now looking pretty pretty interested like she was happy with that attention. So that's super cool. That, that to me is a positive training, training moment, but I really like to be able to call my cats and have them come to me. I've had, I've had cats as far away as a quarter mile and I've called out and they'll like yell out with a loud voice. I kind of wish they would just like make their way over to me, but they're basically just saying, I'm here, I'm here. That happened with Dagger one time before he was going to his neutering appointment and he was a quarter mile away. He busted out of what I had him kept in because I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I know where he is so we don't miss the appointment because it takes freaking forever to get those appointments set up. And there's like, it seems like there's a big wait at most vets and all that. And he got out anyway. So, but I called him. He heard me and responded. And I went over there and got him and put him back in for another four hours or so till it was time for his appointment. So, that's how it all goes. There's just a lot of like walking around and tracking animals and, and doing a little bit of attention and particularly with a young dog like Az and two young kittens, it's quite a bit. And these ducks may end up being similar though. I found ducklings not to be quite so, quite so uh, extreme. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Um, they're gonna typically wanna hang out with the rest of the ducks. So they're together at night and probably in just a couple days, I'm thinking five days to a week of hanging out by themselves, learning where home is. I'm introduced for a few hours in the evening and a few hours in the morning. They sleep during the night and don't really, don't really pay a bunch of attention to that, to the other ducks. Um, so they're slowly getting introduced to the rest of the flock. Hopefully they bond, figure out their pecking order, all that good stuff which seems to be going fine, and then I'll let them out. I also need to introduce Az to them because they are new ducks. So that's gonna be a whole process. Um, Az already knows to leave ducks alone, but he only knows to leave his ducks alone, the ones he's familiar with. As soon as I bring another duck, another animal of any kind, even if he's very familiar with that type of animal, it's all different. He's super interested. So I have to socialize him to each new animal that's brought here. Essentially, I have to Think of it as this is as his homestead and he has to approve and get along with every single animal. Um, that means he's got to nuzzle them and, and do whatever, whatever it is he has to do to, to familiarize himself with them. I just be there and supervise that part to make sure he's not getting carried away and 
you know, traumatizing or accidentally stepping on a kitten, like it has to be supervised just to make sure it's going good. But I have more animal training to do. Get out of the kitchen. She knows it too. She knows it, she knows it, she knows it. Loud noises. Loud noises are great. Sometimes I just kind of, this particular one is being pretty bad about it and I just kind of walk her off. It's not really been working at all, but I don't really know how to, how to keep birds out of stuff. That is just a tough one. They don't care about reprimands. I don't really think there's any way you can discipline them without like actually legitimately harming them. Um, <laughs> yep, they're just, that's a Muscovy duck for you. And that's just one of their, it's an upside that they're so friendly and want to be so close, but it's also a downside because that's my kitchen and I don't need ducks perching all over the place. Cloak, we've come full circle to Cloak. Hey Cloak, kitty kitty, kitty kitty. Nope. Not gonna come to me for easy pets and attention. This feels like enough attention to her. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that gives you some insight into what I do with, with the animals and why everything seems to take so long and why I never seem to get anything done, or at least that's the way I perceive it. Um, but I am getting something done. I'm getting these animals to all behave in a certain way that for the rest of their adult life should be minimal, minimal um, requirements to really work to contain them. So, I like the idea of having no fences here and everything being kind of wide open. Couple coops, there'll probably be some fencing at some point. Um, might make a cool fenced in rabbit area sometime. We'll have to see, maybe just a rabbit tractor. Tractors are cool. If you don't know what a chicken tractor is or a rabbit tractor, it's basically just a portable coop almost with an open bottom that they can eat to be on the ground but that proves to be challenging like it'll have to be a wire bottom to keep pests out as well as this entire property is all uneven so if it's an open bottom like you can do in flat areas you'll have like one area kick up and they can just slip out or some predator can slip in nothing's flat anyway hopefully this was entertaining thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one